Welcome to the Cybersecurity Simplified Podcast, where we take the mystery out of today's top security threats and solutions. The newest weapon in the war on cybercrime. Cyber threats are not only growing in number, they're more lethal and they're relentless and coming at us from all directions every second of every day. The evolving sophistication of cyber threats requires an equally evolved defense, one that has eyes and ears everywhere and can sort through the false alarms to zero in on real threats. In this episode of Cybersecurity Simplified, we'll introduce you to the newest weapon in the war against cybercrime, XDR, also known as Extended Detection and Response. I'm your host, Susanna Song, Director of Communications at Highwire Networks. And good morning, I'm Dave Barton, uh, Chief Technology Officer. And as you know, David was our guest for the first two episodes, but he really just enjoyed time with me and uh, discussing cybersecurity. So now he's decided to join this podcast as a co-host. I'm really excited exactly. about this. Any chance I get to uh, talk about technology with you, Susanna, is fun. So yeah, and we'll in have the process, fun with this. yeah. And if we can, uh, you know, shine the light for some folks and and make their lives better, then uh, why not? Yeah. Well, this is awesome, uh, Dave. Let's just jump right into this newest cybercrime fighting weapon, XDR. Not a lot of people know about it. What exactly does it do? That's a great question. Um, you know, the evolution of XDR got its roots with endpoint detection and response. We we talked about EDR, and EDR had some limitations. And so, as you thought about solving the security problem. The endpoint is just one vector, right? And as we think about uh, protecting our infrastructure, protecting our data, it's got to be more than that. And so it evolved to endpoint uh, from endpoint to managed detection and response. And those organizations who are delivering MDR struggle with integration. They struggle with um, disparate networks, disparate technology sets. If, if you listen to one of our earlier podcasts, I talked about 1,500 point solutions solving problems. Well, MDR is challenging in that you have to be able to go and staff the right people for the right technologies, and you, you effectively, you narrow your lane because you can only do so many types of technologies. XDR is the is the future. It's the next gen of detection and response. X being open or, or any data source. Um, so we're not limiting you to a checkpoint firewall and trend micro endpoint. We, with an open XDR approach, we have the ability to bring in disparate data sets, normalize those, enrich those, uh, reduce those, and then run all of that through multiple types of machine learning, which leads to better detections and better responses. At the end of the day, if, if you listen to our other podcasts, uh, I, I appreciate that. But if you didn't, what I talked about was mean time to detection and mean time to response. And every MSSP you talk to should be measured by how quickly can they catch the bad activity? And then more importantly, how quickly can they respond? And the response doesn't necessarily mean they're getting rid of the bad activity, but they're mitigating it and then allowing you a more structured approach to remediation. Because what's the statistic right now about how long does an average uh, or most companies figure out or find out that they've actually been breached or that yeah, they've so been attacked? Great question. What you're talking about in our vernacular is dwell time right? How long do we let the bad guys live in our network? Or how long have they lived from when they got in to when they were removed? And so if you think about it from that perspective, the industry average, depending on whose report you read, right? And there's some really good reports from Verizon and Ponemon and, and some of the other institutes. Um, I think two or three years ago, that number was upwards of 106 days, right? And so the bad guys were getting in and living there and taking whatever they want over that 106 day window before somebody said, why do I have data going to Azerbaijan? <laughs> right. And, and that's the type of dwell time that 
uh, us, we at Highwire and every MSSP out there should be focused on reducing. And that's uh, honestly, that's where XDR comes in because, you know, one of the things that I've done over my career is I, I always ask uh, CISOs that I have a chance to talk to. I ask them, what are the top three things that you think about? And visibility is one of those. And the fact that <clears throat> they can't see everything they need to see to correlate and make decisions. Because for a security practitioner, risk is the, the, the metric that we think about. It, it's the topic that keeps us up. Are we more at risk? Are we less at risk? If I can't see the bad thing, if I can't see the bad guy, I'm not going to know and I'm not going to be able to give you a good answer is, are we at risk or are we not at risk? Mm -hmm. XDR gives us that ability to see all of the security controls we've deployed and put them together and then paint a picture, right? Correlate that data. Without that, you may have a great EDR and it's really good at detecting that endpoint, but it's not going to see some of that traffic that's going outbound, that's going to a destination that has a bad reputation, right? You're not going to see some of the firewall traffic um, from an EDR. From an MDR, you may not see the east-west. You may only see the firewall and the content filter and maybe your VPN. And so the evolution of this has brought us to XDR and that's the power of the of the product or yes. of the idea. So if we can back up a little bit, EDR stands for endpoint detection and response and MDR, I think you said it was managed detection and response. Yes. And so endpoint, you, you focused on, is it just the perimeter and not the So endpoint is really network? just your desktops, your laptops, your Macs, right? That's the endpoint. And, and to be honest, endpoint is a subset of XDR. And truthfully, MDR is a subset of XDR. Um, what you're starting to see are industry analysts like Gartner or Forrester. They're thinking about it finally from an XDR approach. In fact, Microsoft published something uh, two weeks ago that they're thinking about this problem from an XDR approach as well. So we're not coming up with something new. Mm -hmm. We're just early adopters who are out broadcasting to everyone, you really should be thinking about it from this perspective. This industry concept of XDR, what does that show though about kind of the nature of cybersecurity today? The fact that we have evolved to XDR. So I think, I think XDR is the outcome of a problem set that we tried to solve with point solutions, with vendor supplied, um, What's the right uh, vendor uh, supplied holistic approaches? So, for example, um, Palo Alto has XDR, right? But Palo Alto is really good in their lane of Palo Alto products, but they don't really account for, well, what if I use Cisco? Or what if I use Sophos? Or what if I use XYZ? And so the evolution of XDR has moved from vendor specific in our case, in, in the other cases to where we're at today with Overwatch, we're vendor agnostic. We don't mm -hmm. care. We don't care what firewall you bring to the table. We don't care what endpoint tool that you've got protecting and doing EDR. We don't care what proxy or email gateway. We're going to bring all that together and we're going to enrich that data. We're going to normalize that data. We're going to correlate that data. And then we're going to run all that through machine learning and give you highly credible high fidelity uh, anomalies, right? Mathematical anomalies. And those that's, answer- That's the power. And that, exactly. And the power of answering to business pain points. Exactly. At that I mean, point, the fact that not, you could integrate all the different tool sets. I mean, there are just so many out there, so many point solutions. There are, there are. You know, and, and I mentioned in the last podcast- um, RSA last year, there were 1,500 booths between the two floors, right? It's impossible to think about how do I, how do I manage that? How do I orchestrate or how do I architect? How do I integrate all those things? XDR is that approach that we've got to make that happen. Um, question about Security Operations Center. We, we discussed that in episode two. <laughs> Do all security operations centers offer 
XDR? Because it seems like that's the way the industry is headed towards in order to be effective. So I think that's the future. Um, the short answer is no, right? And 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 the problem is, and and the legacy SEM vendors won't want to talk about this. But I can tell you, because I've, I've done the research, they're feverishly trying to get to this point that we've already got to. Um, and so if you think about some of the major players to get this XDR integration, they have to go and refit and rebuild a lot of their data gathering and orchestration tools that they've built. Um, we're already there, mm -hmm. right? We, we came out of the box multi-tenant, which most of those other players aren't. And so they're trying to fix that. And then they're trying to go into a full XDR orchestration approach and it's going to take time. So for us, we went straight into let's, let's get rid of version or gen one and gen two of SEM tools. Let's go into this next platform approach. That's full XDR that gives us a whole lot more scalability and integration ability. Yeah, Overwatch um, uses XDR, um, our managed stock. Could you share some use cases of how powerful this tool is? Sure. So, I don't know, maybe five, four or five months ago, um, on a Saturday morning, I was drinking a cup of coffee and I was reading security trade rags, right? Because, you know, that's what you do on a Saturday. <laughs> um and I've, I've, I was reading about a very large integrator that had about a $10 billion company. So very big, right? Very advanced processes and tool sets and controls and, and really smart people. But they got hit with ransomware. And as I read through the article, I read through how the ransomware got in. Um, and, and they published in that article all of the indicators of compromise of this platform, right, of, of this ransomware attack. So I took all those and I stuck them into our XDR tool and I ran that check against every one of our customers. In five minutes, I knew without a shadow of a doubt, we hadn't seen that ransomware anywhere, right? To me, that's powerful. I don't, I don't have to log into 10 different SIMs because I've got 10 different customers running 10 different SIMs. Um, I logged into one place, I put in those IOCs, but then I took it a step further and this is where XDR really shines is I took those IOCs and I built a query and I set that query to run every five minutes across all of my customer base. And what that does for us is as soon as that IOC pops up anywhere, we're going to know about it. And then we'll go through our normal response process to help protect our customers. What does IOC stand for? Indicator of compromise. Got it. That is a very powerful tool. It was huge. Just five minutes. I knew without a shadow of a doubt, we hadn't seen it anywhere. And you touched on this a little bit, but is this the new kind of the new way for cybersecurity that in a few years, if you don't, if you're not offering XDR, you're not using XDR that you're just going to lose out that. Well, I, I think not, not just lose this. out, right? I, look, there's, there's still going to be folks using, um, older generation technology, it's gonna happen and, and they're gonna miss things, right? So from a, from, a, from a risk perspective, a security analyst, you know, I'm, I'm a long time security guy, I need to see more. And if you're using a, a first gen tool with a four cylinder engine, you're not gonna catch up to the other tools that are, and the attackers who are using V6s and V8s, right? It's just not gonna happen. So I think the short answer, Susanna, is, there's going to be those partners or those those companies out there who are using first gen, second gen tool sets, but I think they're going to be more likely to be compromised because mm -hmm. they're not seeing everything, right? They're not correlating and integrating. Very insightful. Thank you for joining um, us to all of our listeners out there. If you have feedback about today's podcast or questions for David or myself, feel free to contact us at marketing at highwirenetworks.com or just leave a comment. Be sure to join us for our next episode. I'm really excited about this one. It's called The Nerd in the Basement and Other Myths About Hackers. Until next time, I'm Susanna Song. I'm Dave Barton. And you're listening to Cybersecurity Simplified.
From all of us here at Overwatch by Highwire Networks, thank you for listening. We'll catch you next time on the Cybersecurity Simplified Podcast. To learn more, visit us at highwirenetworks.com slash podcast.